that's going to do is give you better dexterity overall.
we're going to do is we'll put some machine into relief oh. and it'll actually warm the hydraulic oil up to about yep. 131 degrees takes it back out and then you're it's like stretching your legs when you're getting ready to go well, we used to do that a lot with backhoes in the winter time leave Just them off them. push yeah. out get over relief that made a big difference came out with proportional control there it was like eh, eh. I like the bang 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 they try and do with the log loaders is at least give you a little proportional control so you're not snapping the cylinders all the time right, create right, a weak point right same idea with the thumb but if you want that dexterity to where you can just chatter you, you need to have that right. or you're or you're on the stick all the time like that. <laughs> right just go over doing it you grab the hold and you to do the thumb you're actually it's you're just it. it's like you gotta let go well, on you it get, you get used to some guys will get used to where they're just cramming it and they're ramming the bucket against it too which you're putting the machine into relief right right where ideally you want the bucket to overpower the thumb so it comes back on relief right. where it's supposed to instead of right talking that rod but uh, you need to figure out for sure by grabbing them handles yeah, and feeling which button you want. Just, one, I was you can tell it, the low one, it might be too low. You might. I was hoping it'd just be one button. <laughs> well, one's going to be natural. Like, one's going to... Like boom boom? No. No. Uh, well, only one button on the back. On the two. back oh, side. Because yeah. I, I guess if you grab the wrong one, you just go to the next But you're one. Gonna, your hands are going to fit on there where they're always going to be, and you're, that button's going to be the right one. You'll be used to this here. They added this button up here. Oh. So Probably in this system, one. I can assign it to where if your phone, you can answer the phone with this button or that button or whatever. That and it's just so. Yeah, can answer the phone. I've been job. trying them all morning. <laughs> Do you want your spool responses on slow right now, medium or fast for the bomb? Everything, Everything. fast. Okay. <laughs> it's not all a race car, Greg. <laughs> it's a race excavator. Maybe you should go slow, that way you... They fuck fast, dude. <laughs> it's only on medium right now. No, I know, a medium's fucking like, holy fuck. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, I need to... The thing it is, you'll be able to... You'll know. You'll be able to go... I'll know in a minute. Well, anyway. you're getting into some dexterity we stuff, you can slow her down. Get it and all it's doing is slowing way. your implement spool responses. Curl, thumb, everything that way. Swing a little bit. Um, and it's going to be timing off your joystick of which way you're going. Show them how the bucket release is first. Okay. And we'll just hook it, Greg, or and come over and we'll. This is what's going to piss him off. It's the annoying sound. Probably. Oh, well, sucks. he's used yeah. to it. Go ahead. They don't have to hear it very often because he doesn't uh, change the bucket. Change the bucket. Oh, really? They never change the bucket. It buckets. is what it is? Yes. You don't like cleanup bucket? Oh, I do. This never.
always bring this up first. It's not going to do anything. Right. As soon as you come off that, you can pull up. You just kind of notice up there. Get it like, right away. Yep. I always just do this. I know it's wrong. All right. Just go ahead and put it down. We can turn it down. We don't want to go above 12 minutes, just because as it's idling, it's it's just creating water, right, in your regeneration system. So we want that shit out of it as fast as possible. That way, you're you're getting the cleanest, you know, burn through each time. Elevating your idle, that's fine. Idle is just not the best thing for any sort of right. regeneration for any, system for any long yeah. time. Anyway. Well, when you get up into the, obviously you won't be there, but if you get up into Salem North. If they give you like a seven minute idle. Really? Yeah, so if your machine isn't tier four final, they don't want it idle in more than seven to ten minutes and they want you shutting it off. And then you have to have a mixture of tier four final right, versus. Right. So it's that, I'm not going to call it the new green deal, but you can kind of be a little bit of that. Um, tons of adjustment in your seat. I see you've got the air seat, you've got that turn knob over there is going to be this on your controllers. Um, your, your armrest here, you got rollers here, up and down, yeah. exactly. You got the air seat there, you got your slider front and forward, you got your backrest, you got the headrest, heated cool seat. Ready, Where did you turn that on? Actually, the main nope, it's, it's right on the seat. Okay. That way you know it's the on two sand right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. This one's going to be it's, it's just heated. Got you. <laughs> this one's a little funkier. Um, I think just because you have two settings right? on the switch. Okay. But there's your back row switch right there. Okay, so that's going to be your lane. Take that. Uh, right here. The truck. Make that scare the box. I got the, like, the lumbar knob. Yes. And this is going to be in the nice. middle is off. The other way it's going to tell you where it's at. Um, shut her down real fast. It's going to say lock security on the screen. I always just say no until you guys are ready to set a secure key. Um, because there's no key to start it, it's literally click over, click start. Push the button. Yep. Start back up. So it's going to give you a warning. It's flashing and it says yellow, right? Def purge active. Mm -hmm. So if we went down here onto the knife switch, the yellow light's going to be emitted. As long as that yellow light's on, don't touch the knife switch. It's purging that def fluid back through the injectors, through the lines, down through the pump and into the, the holding container. And then it creates basically an oxygen lock. So if you looked at deaf fluid and milk, put them both on the counter, take the caps off, they both start to spoil. Very similar, right? You don't want to drink sour milk. You don't want to put no. sour deaf in your machine. So if you look at your deaf and it looks a little milky, it's junk. 
Really? Don't want it. Um, you notice, like when you even when you pull a new jug out, you see a little bit of the crystallation yes. on the sides. Yeah. Good remedy for some of that stuff. Just a little jug of water, wash it off. It makes it super soluble, it goes oh, away. Um, the idea behind the DEF is it's like 66.6 something percent deionized water. The other 33 and whatever change is urea. So it does, if you look, it's got an expiration date on the boxes and the jugs. Wow. So um, I, I feel the best medicine is a two and a half of the two gallon jugs or whatever they're, two and a half. Yeah, that's what I do. Don't transfer it in anything. Don't do this. Right. You're going to only use about two to three percent depth per gallon of fuel, depending on which mode you run in. You've got smart mode, eco mode, and power mode. Currently, I've got it set at medium oh. and power mode. Okay. And I can show you all you got to do is click, click, click. Well, we'll and when you want to go into here. high, we can throw it right into high. It's it's not a problem. Um, with the with the, I guess the depth conversation, um, your practice is going to be. The biggest thing to make sure your regeneration system they're not super finicky as long as you're staying on your thing um i don't i wouldn't say you're gonna have to put def in this thing every single day what about do sand drinks it so and that's traditionally what we've noticed um link belts kind of the same way really drink, drink a lot of def um and usually the argument is oh well i haven't had to put def in this at all well your tank's two and a half times bigger than the tank that i have um which doesn't speak volumes for cat because you'd want a little bit bigger tank if you could have it. But the idea is that your your consumption is so minute because of the consist, consistent dosing of you know the regeneration system. Typically, I'd say if you were in a log loader setting and you're shovel logging and you're doing all sorts of stuff, you're probably going to burn about 3.8 gallons an hour no matter what. In the log loader, this one you you could be depending on your cycle time and what you're doing. I'm going to say anywhere from three and a half to four and a half maybe five if you're really pushing on it um, but i wouldn't guess that um, so if you extrapolate that you got a 260 something gallon tank you're not putting definite a lot just have it with you yeah you say i wear some junk every day and i keep it full anyway yeah yeah and it's it's just it's all about your practice you know and how you how you really yeah, stick I'm after pretty fussy with my stuff good that's very good. I got it. My work groups. My you have to see my twenty one. Oh jeez. I got a hundred thousand dollars in that one. Oh jeez. Six inch bit, thirty seconds. So your airbox, obviously you have an inner and outer. Yep. Same thing here. You got an inner and outer for your cabin. Twenty seven PSI if you're gonna blow it out, your outer. Never blow out your inner. Do what you wanna do, but I usually just, tap yeah. the outer if it's real bad and put it back yeah. in. Cat's got a weird like two finger rule yeah. roll that they wanna promote, which is fine. Um, but if you are gonna blow them out, 27 PSI. You want volume rather than pressure. Right. Um, obviously your fuse box is there. The red switch, that's your get out of dodge switch. If the thing catches fire, flip that. Okay. It's not a prelude to something either. <laughs> Here is your knife switch. That's that yellow light I was talking to you about. Yeah. So the warning up there is gonna flash just like this. This one will be just solid emittance until it's done. Um, obviously your cooling package, AC, everything's here. Um, with this size of cab and the amount of window space that's in it, we ended up running two yes. condensers. Or how the high ID. Freeze you out of it, yeah. Um, again, same thing, just your, your normal practice, CFMs rather than PSI. Yeah. A lot of times on a Friday, I'll wash it at the end of the day, right? To where I'm not collecting dust, right? And go home, and then go home. So your reversing fan, I've got to set it every 35 minutes currently. Okay. So you'll hear you'll hear it kick on, and it's gonna go. <laughs> you'll probably see a big poof, and then it'll go right back to the normal thing. Then one, you know, one if you wanted to go faster, right here, if it's super dusty out, out, we can set that up. If not. I mean, all this stuff you can do literally right there, and I'll I'll give you baby steps into it so it doesn't seem overwhelming. Oh yeah, the nine yeah. Most of it's pretty sedentary stuff. So on this side, you have a ground level oil check. I'll see that on YouTube. So right here, you have the same thing up top, top. So when you're up top as well, <clears throat> this is your hydraulic vacuum pump. So if you lost the hose or something, I'll show you in the monitor where you can get to that. You're literally going to hit enable. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's oh, ideally, you're going to shut the machine off, yeah. key it back on, hit that, 
You should hold that pressure back. And that's right here. Everything's pretty close to you know ground level stuff. Obviously, high and wide, it's a little more difficult. Anything you see with a colored port, it's either a test port or a quick drain. Um, anything that's black, that's a pressure. So if we got to come out and test something for pressure, or whatnot, that's what you're gonna have there. Um, here's where your side camera is. You also have crazy lights on this thing. Um, I played with them up there. They're, yeah, they're awesome. super bright. Yeah. They are. The the rear one, um, the way it's mounted is really good for if it's super dark out, early mornings. Um, I have not used it yet in the fog, so I don't know how that's going to work. If it's going to overshine it, or if the camera will refresh. Yeah, you know, that's just a quick look once in a while. Right. I, I don't actually go by by the camera. Say. No, I don't even use them on the pad. Yeah, no, I, I had no idea where the, this. is obviously your toolbox. Right. Yeah. 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 Fire yeah. Yeah. Sure. I got two behind the cab up here. Oh, also, do. yes, two ten pounders. Right. Holy moly! Sure, you want to go that way? I mean, there. I mean. Well, there was also another one that was like a really golden, nasty. We've also got like a bar saw box here. I was wondering what that was when I was up there. Yep. Def tank. Def tank here. It's going to give you a level indicator there. So typically, at, when it's at the bottom, that means it's half full. Okay. You're also going to have a real time gauge inside the monitor. You're going to see fuel and depth like side by side. chambers right down there. Um, again, it's going to do its job as long as you're doing yours, right? Uh, fuel, obviously over there. That is a filter on the top of it. You don't have to see a lot of those. So um, if you get to a point where it's running and then it, and you're going and all of a sudden it dies, go ahead and pop that cap to your goat. It's probably because that filter's plugged. So that is a replaceable filter. I would keep a cap also, just in case, because you can kind of play with them a little bit, clean them up and get them back in there. Um, but that's usually a leading cause, unless you're out of fuel or something like that. I like to keep my fuel level up above a quarter. I try to keep it full. Yeah. Um, so, and same thing with the def. When you get the def too low, it's gonna throw you a weird code and say, I need you to fill me up. Chances are then you're in the monitor playing to try and get it to go back to the way it's supposed to be. This is the telematics device. So if this thing throws a code and it has some sort of cell reception, we can typically see what the code is. It's not like we monitor it all the time, but at least we're able to locate where the machine is within you know, some sort of proximity. Um, but this will only key up when that knife switch is on and when you start the ignition. So let's say somebody hijacks the thing. That's the way Komatsu was. Yep, as soon as they key that thing on and start it, bang. As long as it's in some sort of reception, so. Your skate patch, obviously this is your radio antenna here. There is no radio, no HVAC it system. House. It's the HVAC system and radio, like listening radio is gonna be in your monitor. Okay, yeah, I played with that up yeah. at the shop. Um, another skate patch here, and then we'll kind of move that way. Big thing, remote lines for your boom, <clears throat> going out to those pins so you're not laying her down. The stuff on the front end, obviously you're gonna lay it down to grease it. Yeah. Um, Pick your poison on what your greasing maintenance is. It's There's, every day. That's exactly when it right. Comes, when it comes down, it cools exactly. down at night, I grease. Exactly. Um, there's always a question on, well, can you put too much grease in it? Well, yeah. You well, can, yeah, you when it's dripping can. off exactly. in the chimney. <laughs> exactly. I get so picky. I come up on the Sundays and solvent my yep. joints off because I like it clean. Like I guess clean too fast. No, it's good. It's good. Um, the adverse, besides it dripping down or getting your wife or significant other upset is that it's everywhere and it'll actually collect particulate matter 
And if you're not greasing it enough, you over grease it. Oh, I got it the other day. I got it the other day. It's working itself back in. So we like to see anything 3% or better molly. It's going to condition the uh, pin bosses and joints and things like he that gets a little that better. Gr uh, green Lucas stuff. It'll work perfect. Good. Um, other than that, we can kind of run that way. Since we're right here, you see that little sensor down there on the sidewall? Yeah. So if I show you a monitor, it's going to show you pitch and roll of this machine in the monitor. Oh, so if you know that you got a flat road or you're at a 2% and you need to continue that, you got a 2% this way and you got a 2% that way, just line of sight. So it's not, um, being an operator is probably not going to help you immensely, but if you ever do have to check yourself a little bit and know where you're at, um, that's a good thing to have. Uh -huh. The excavator side of it, it, they go way, way beyond that with payload and 3D and 2D I and assist. And, yeah. Well, good Lord. It's headed this way. You won't see any of the sensors on the outside. It's actually going to be in the main boom structures and things like that. It will not be in the cylinders because they tried that already and it was not the funnest thing to deal with. Um, other than that, we can head back down. So I've noticed that it waits for that cat symbol to come up. I don't know if it's some little advertisement or whatnot, but it comes up and then you can so right here is telling you basically your configuration of your buttons. So ideally, if we had it programmed, you could put this would be open or close, this would be open or close on your thumb, and it would tell you what it is right there. The only reason why it says hammer close right there is when you're when you're set it. They call it a, a SAE clamshell pattern, um, which is not enabled in this. All it is is plug in and turn it on. Um, Again, it's all it's all doable, and what it's regulating is voltage, right? Um, you just hit OK here. It's going to ask you right now, auto warm up ready. You're going to say yeah if you want, no if you don't want to. So if we hit this and say yeah, it's going to say put the plug in on the ground. We already know it's on the ground. The machine's going to idle up. It's going to put it into hydraulic relief, warm up that oil to 131 degrees, take itself off, and it's basically like stretching your legs, right? Once it's done, it's off and running. What Caterpillar like, or excuse me, the Caterpillar trainers, what they like to say is we want you to do three movements of everything. Meaning travel forward, travel backwards, travel forward, travel backwards, travel forward, travel backwards. And we want curl, and we want thumb, and we want stick, and we want boom. It's a good practice, but typically when you are doing your warm up now, you're doing your walk around or doing whatever you need to do and get your stuff ready. As soon as you go and you get back into it, you're already doing a couple motions, right? You're gonna swing, you're gonna pull up, you're gonna curl. Your thumb's probably closed at night, you're probably gonna raise it up. It's just getting that oil through it, and you're off and running. How long does it stay in that mode right there? Right now it does, and it's just, just you can go out of it, right? As soon as you do this, as as you, yeah, you're ready to go. Yeah. So, and it's just kind of one of those things that they're starting to implement and it'll ask you to do it again if it's not, if it knows it's not a temperature. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, so we already know. It's off right now. There's your rear. It's for the Quick heat. keys up here also, just like down there. Turn up your heat. Turn it down. Like right now it's off. So in the excavators, you have a dial and all this stuff yep. over here. Yep. Be nice to have it in here. They just don't have it yet. We wanted to go home. We can turn on the radio if we wanted to. We want to go home. We can. That's going to be your phone. No phones connected. We're going to here. Basically, going to give you everything. So you got auto warm up. You got your auto idle. Vacuum pump. So if you're in here and you lose a hose, you're literally going to go boom. You're going to hit vacuum pump. Heavy lift, if you want to turn it on, turn it on, okay? Depending on what you're doing. Fine swing. So that's not to be confused with, it's it's going to be really fine incremental swing. In Europe, they call it fine swing. We call it free swing, okay? So, and it's not something that you, you're going to turn on and you're going to have to pull an orifice out or anything like right. that. It's literally going to do its drift. It's basically taking your swing brake off, 
essentially, right? Work light control. This is just going to show you your work lights in the back. You can turn them on, you can turn them off. You just hit them one. There, there you go. That would be. That would be that side. On. On. It's off. Oh, off. Yep, those are off. When they're green, they're on. Now, all that's doing is if you don't want those on, because they're not on right now, because right. all your light switches are over there. Right. These turn that one. Yeah. And click it another one that turns the boom on. Yes, the, and which those are considered your work lights, so we'll also control those as well. And if you want them off all the time, oh, I'll just go in and shut them off. Yeah. Oh, it'll be all of them will be on in the morning because I got to see what I'm doing. So we'll leave those on right now. They're not actually on on outside. So if we wanted to go home, we'll go here. Now, call this the Rubik's cube. If you wanted to change your operators or do any of that kind of stuff, you basically go in. You're going to hit OK. Code entry. We're not going there. What we will go into is when we need to change the thing. Our service code that we right. use, which just so you know, is the last four of the serial number. Um, if we need to change something hard, then we leave. But we can change it back, obviously. Your settings, it's the same thing. Display settings, information, machine setting, operator settings, service. Service, we go in here, we put a code in, and that's basically for us to get into the system. We have display. So we can adjust it. English, we want to keep it in there. Yeah. Language, don't put it in any other language that you can't Google, because it'll screw you and then you're reading Arabic or Chinese, whatever. This is how you set up your shortcuts. So you, already, you only have four and they're already set that way. If you want them different, I would do it. I would not use the manual reversing fan because then it's not auto. You have to hit it when you want it, right? Ooh. So we don't want to do no. that. Fine swing's another one. I doubt no. you're going to use that. No. Um, brightness adjust. Day, night, you can do them different. Put it on that one, turn them back, put it on day, it's brighter. Okay. Now going back in here is information. It's basically going to tell you your performance, everything real time. So if you put the thing into relief, all your, you see your pump outlet pressure go up. Your hydraulic temperature obviously isn't at 131. Not that it's going to stay there all the time, but we're we'll back out of that. Current totals. This will give you what your travel, how many hours you got on your travel motor, your hydraulic pump, your swing motor, all those things. Tools, so each tool you have on it, total idling time, total fuel, all those things. I really don't care about license information. Machine setting, power mode setting, reversing fan, we've already got it set currently. Auto reversing fan. It's enabled at 35 minutes. 35 minutes is good for you, or? Oh, that's fine. Okay. As long as it does You can time. override it if you want. Um, audio, auto warm up, we've already got that. Power mode setting, it's default, which is retain last. If you look up here, it says power, right? So that's your high power mode. So now, go out of here. We've already been through those. Well, except for your bucket, so. I don't doubt, I doubt you're probably going to put a hammer on this. No, nope. but here's your thumb. If you end up going to a grapple or something, we can set it up in here. And you're literally going to, once you get out of it, you get everything hooked up, put your grapple on, you're going to come here and go grapple. That's the only thing. And then when you go back to thumb, you're going to go thumb. And it's going to show you the icon of what it is right there. Okay. Pitch and roll. That's what that sensor is telling you right now. So you're roughly at a 4% here. You're roughly at a 2% there. Wow. Okay. Hydraulic temp, engine temp, def fluid, fuel. And these are your quick keys. So, if you push this button down, it's not doing anything. Ah, uh, smart mode. See that? Okay. Hold it down again. Economy mode. It'll change up there. Hold it down again. So, the difference between those, much like they sound, um, power mode, it's all you. It's not going to guess what you're trying to do because you're doing a half hitch pull on your boom or your stick. It's giving you a complete control of the machine. Smart mode is the opposite of that. Smart mode is trying to think with you. So, if you're barely pulling a half hitch, it's only right. going to give you so much, right? Yeah. Because it's really trying to compensate fuel and all those things. Now, in smart mode, 
you may see, you may feel it, but you may not. Typically in smart mode, if you're doing a combination of things, plus travel, I do machine, a lot of that. the machine goes, priorities travel. So it wants, really? it wants to travel, travel. Because a lot of times I'm swinging and pinching at exactly. the same time. Exactly. So I would run it in eco or power. Try them all. I mean, the only difference is going to be literal besides power. Fuel burn. Fuel burn, oh, that consumption. Who cares? As long as you're moving, yes. you're making money. Um, but just think about it. If, if you ever get the opportunity to use it, um, just try it. Say, hey, that's terrible or that's awesome. Yeah, a lot of times I'm traveling, swinging. Uh, I notice on the deuce and the thumb takes a lot of it out of it. Yep. Out of something. It's because it's pulling the two pump, probably. Wow. So on this, and you'll notice it. So what I'm going to do right now, let's do this. I'll put it into smart mode. This is the RPMs. Okay. Dive down a little bit. Yeah. Now listen to this one. This one's much higher. It's much easier when you're playing now. Yeah, that would dive down a little bit. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Wow. So smart mode's trying to combine nice. eco and power mode. Is essentially what it is. There is a definite difference. I don't know if it's 100 RPMs, 150, 50, between smart and power because power, it's wanting to know that I've got everything right now. Um, other than that, that's your idle over there on the right with the rotate. Press the button if you want to change. If not, don't ever think about it. Just do what you do. Right. And, and get some seat time. Travel alarm. You don't like hearing it? Uh, as no soon idea. as you come off of it, it's going to go back to making an alarm. But if, let's say, you're loading in the yard one morning or something like right. that, you don't want to like anybody up, you can hit it there. This is your mute for your radio. This is going to be inflammation. It's going to kick your head into there. You just hold it down. It's going to tell you your pattern, the thumb, medium spool pressure, or medium spool reactivity, button configuration to let off. Squirt juice, or no, squirt juice. Switch and wipers, light, light, two speed travel. Down below your right elbow, charging stations, um, USB, uh, depending on what you're running and how you run it. You got that. So if you have your phone connected to it, you're wanting to talk through your phone, that's your little speaker down there. Talk like you're talking. Mine stays on the pick of phone, right? <laughs> Good job. Um, other than. I'm out of cell service, I'm not right. going to work anyway. Other than that, you got your windows up and down. You know all that stuff. Uh, yeah, that's the do sounds a lot lower. I'm gonna have to get used to doing this because a lot of times I'm next to a bank. Is it high? The seat high enough for you? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just, it could be. Is it because that one doesn't have a six inch treasure? The cab's a little bit further down. Uh, yes. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Because I don't scratch counterweights, and I like to be able to see. see where I'm right, where I'm at. And that mirror probably help you. Ah, uh, yeah. Honestly. That okay. way I can see. A lot of times I'm just, I don't want to take the time to look, and I can just right. look right there, see who's around me. Okay. Um, we'll do this real quick. You already know what your buttons are, correct? Yes. For the most part? Okay. I took about two hours at your shop. I kind of figured. <laughs> I kind of figured. I had it figured out, I think. I thought, man, it's going to be forever. <laughs> I got into it. Both of these, I was like, gosh, this is easy. It's it's not, it's having the open mind, right? If it was an excavator, we were sitting in a real construction excavator right now, some of the other, you'd be like, stop, just let me run it for a little bit. And that's, my thing is, is just to give you just enough to where you feel good about it, and then go to work, let me know how you feel. What is the difference between, you say road builder, excavator, and log loader, obviously, I yeah, guess. So, and yeah, so your, your, obvious, but your undercarriage is pretty much the same. Um, the guts of the machine are pretty much the same. It's going to be boom stick configuration and riser. The cab's going to be the same, depending on if it's a rear entry or side entry, but your overall feel of the cab's going to be the same. Um, where it gets a little funky is when you're picking your boom stick configuration of under under or over under or button top or clamshell. Um, those are all different packages predicated upon what your platform or work is, and it's literally curtailed to that only. Um, the road builder, it's nice because you have the flexibility to run a processor as well. Clamshell, a log, you know, you just don't have the reach that a log loader would normally have. So 
And say the same this same machine, you'd have 36 foot of reach with a under under heating stick. With a under over, you'd have 38 foot of reach. It's about a foot and a half, two feet. So um, the button yeah. top, everything else is going to be a little bit different. The idea behind this is to kind of give you a some sort of a Swiss Army knife. If you're going to be off on your own and changing a lot of attachments, that's that 12 minute idle really? shut down. That's good. So it basically said 12 minutes, our regeneration system, we don't want to create no more soot. We're going to shut down. And then we rotate. Yep. Say no. And then rotate her back over. Just go ahead and rotate her back over. She turned green. Yep. Start her back up.
I'll just hide away.